I'm Saki, mm, uh, studying electromagnetic geophysics in the University of British Columbia. And today I want to introduce uh, electrical dipole widget. And the tool that we're going to use uh, is a Jupyter notebook. And it's an interactive coding and computational environment, which is really helpful for my research and for a lot of uh, educational staff that we're working on. Um, <clears throat> okay, so simply, without too much explanation, uh, you click that and then you activate that cell, then you by pressing the shift enter, you can run. So we're running the cells, we're importing uh, quite a bit of uh, stuff. Okay, so it's running, give me some warnings, but that's okay. So it ran, so it's changed it. Now, and then I want to see some setups, so I've made some plotting function. So like I run this cell and that run that plotting function that I imported from previous cell that will provide this image, okay? So we have, this is like a setup for Crosswell EM survey that we're going to deal with, use <coughs> to provide some context of geophysics. So we have a two boreholes at, at like this one is a transmitter hole. So transmitter is located. So here the transmitter could be a plus and minus electrodes. So we attach that uh, plus and minus electrodes to the well, through the well, and so basically to the earth. And then we can inject the current from plus to minus electrodes. So the current will flow in the ground. So current will flow and something like that. The current flow will make a potential difference in, at the receiver locations. And we can measure that potential uh, difference uh, made by current flow. And <clears throat> oh, like, yeah, so that's like a sort of problem. But if we have some conductivity contrast in there, for example, if you have a gold, that'll make a different conductivity value from the background conductivity. And the current path will be distorted due to that conductivity contrast from the gold. And we measure that distorted responses from the receiver location. And somehow by interpreting that, we want to image the conductivity structure of the earth here. And if you want to do that well, we really need to understand what's happening in the earth when we're exciting the system by using some electromagnetic sources, okay? And well, like if you put a constant current that can be considered as a DC, so static problem, but if you're putting sinusoidal current with a certain frequency that can be considered as a frequency domain EM survey, and in that case, depending on frequency, there can be a lot of physical things happening. So there can be some static charge buildup, but also there can be EM induction. But like if you go really high frequency, there's going to be a wave-like feature as well, which sometimes we use as a GPR. Okay, so there are like enough complexity or complex physics happening, and we really need to know. We really want to know what's what that is, and we want to see how the field looks like based upon that. And that's sort of the goal of, of making these widgets and then sort of presenting it. Um, <clears throat> so here, let's assume the capital F with bald face is, is a EM field, which, which is a vector. And then that's complex value because we're in the frequency domain. And that's a function of X, Y, Z location, so 3D. And it's a function of conductivity and frequency. So it's a pretty complex function. And then <clears throat> here's our setup. So Crosswell EM setup. And we're interested in 3D volume. So like we're gonna run this widget. But like thinking about vectors in 3D is actually pretty pretty complex. So we're gonna sort of narrow it down. So we're gonna focus on certain plane that we're interested. So like this one is XZ plane, but you could choose YZ plane if you want. And then you could move your plane like by changing this offset value. So if you want to see the receiver plane, I need 50, okay? Okay, so like that. But if you want to go back to the default, you can just rerun, that'll go back to default. So this is like, say, assuming that I'm interested in XZ plane at, uh, at the receiver. And then we run this. So I want to see the electrical fields at that receiver plane, and then that'll pop up. Pretty soon. Yeah, perfect. Okay, so this is the vector fields at XZ plane. So remember our vertical electrical dipole was here. 
So like, so it seems like plus is here, well, plus is here, then like it goes like that, like that. And then if you look at the receiver location, that looks like this. So that looks, that's like a measure of data will be looks like in your bowl hole, okay? But definitely it's a vector field. So, well, but like, uh, so like just, we could break apart as an X and Z component. So let's assume that I want to see the Z component and then I change the scalar and that'll show the Z component, which looks like that. So remember it was going down, so minus. And, uh, <clears throat> but that was like, <clears throat> if you look at the Y component, that'll be ooh, nothing because Y component is zero. So there's some singularity and that's the X component like that. And remember we're using zero frequency. This is the C regime. So like there's no imaginary part, but uh, yeah. Okay. So that's what's happening. But you could change, you could increase the frequency that'll be different. Okay, but let's not go there. But I'm now I'm interested in that YZ plane. So I still, same like remove, uh, want to move uh, to uh, where receiver is. So with the receiver plane, that's where I'm interested. And then I run that. So I want to see the vector fields at that plane. So remember the vector is going like that, we're going like that, right? And so that's how it looks like. So it should go down mostly, but there's some stuff goes up and like goes up like that, <clears throat> which is interesting. And then like, this is log scale, but I kind of want to see the linear scale as well. So you could change that because it sort of gives you a different context. Uh, just changing the scale gives you a different idea. So that's a linear scale. And well, so this is a vector field, but I want to see now Z component. So I change to scalar. Yeah, so that's like a, that's really typical dipolar response for certain components, right? Remember Z was going down. So that gives us minus, right? And some plus here and there, which sort of makes sense. So this is like what we're expecting. So if the earth is homogeneous, and then if you do the survey, of a cross well, and then for a single source, if you look at the receiver data at all of your receiver location in the vertical hole, that will be looks like that. Okay, so it's kind of nice to have that idea before you start, right? Yeah. And well, now you could think about we could think about measuring magnetic field, then that will be different, right? And then by choosing like this magnetic field, you could sort of think about that. So is that probably singular? And then like, I think it should be Y component is going to be big, right? So the dipole, we're seeing that dipolar field <coughs> anyway. And well, like we were, I was showing just DC case, but if you're increasing the frequency, like I don't know, tens to six, then that's going to be pretty much different because now there are a lot of different things happening, right? There is induction coming. There are also wave field uh, from dielectric displacement current. Yeah, right. So we like we need to know what's what could happen even just for the simple case. And uh, having that idea will be really helpful to proceed for actual survey and then interpreting data. And uh, I hope this tool could uh, a little bit help about under understanding uh, fundamentals of electromagnetics. Thank you.